YouTube is being forced by lawmakers to impose forced verification. These restrictions are being put in place to end online anonymity as we know it, and they will tell you it is there to protect the younger generation, but their true intention is to link an identity to every single person, as this person says right here, so that they can hold accountable for things said and done on the internet. Now, do I believe that? Absolutely. I think if you take a look at the recent trends and how governments are treating users online and treating the internet in general, it is definitely going towards the surveillance path, and that's definitely not good good for anybody that is trying to not hand over their ID for everything that they do online, including sending messages over on Discord, commenting on X, posting on Reddit. You're basically going to be identified for being on any of these platforms. And now it has come to YouTube. Now, the thing with YouTube is that it's actually rolling out an AI based verification uh, in the United States. And the thing is that the system guesses if you're under 18 based on your activity. So it'll take a look at your video searches, your watched videos, your account age. And if flagged as a minor, YouTube will automatically apply a teen safety measure and that will restrict your content. It'll give you break reminders and there won't be any personalized ads. And yes, some videos will completely disappear if you are age restricted. Now, you may have heard that similar AI tools are already being used by Meta on Instagram and TikTok to spot underage users. And now it's coming to YouTube. So the impact is that a lot of adults are being incorrectly flagged as teens and the AI will just shoot age verification prompts left and right without considering how long you've actually been on the platform and whatnot. So yeah, there's a lot of concern regarding the uh, safety and privacy behind all this information that is being stored by YouTube, you know, potential data leaks, misuse, even though Google claims it uses the world's most advanced security to protect their data breaches will still happen even in the biggest of companies it doesn't really matter there will always be a breach not to mention that google working with the government by providing them with information about their users so that's not so good and so if you're in the states and you want to avoid being id'd on youtube you can just use a vpn to make it look like you're elsewhere. So I'm just gonna demonstrate using ExpressVPN here. So this is what I typically like to use. So I'm just gonna go to whatismyip.com and my browser, and as a result, YouTube, if I go to YouTube, will think that I am now in the Netherlands. As you can tell right here, it thinks I'm in Amsterdam. So if I were to go to incognito mode right here, go to YouTube, so now I'm on YouTube, I'm signed out because this is incognito, but you'll notice in the sports section, the first thing that it gave me is Netherlands versus Bangladesh with cricket. So again, it thinks that I am now in the Netherlands and it's giving me whatever is trending in the Netherlands, because again, it thinks I'm in the Netherlands. So if you're in the States, and you're coming across the age verification prompt, that's what you can do. Simply connect to a VPN that is reliable, connect to a country where none of these laws apply, and you'll be able to avoid being flagged. Just remember, every time you sign into YouTube, you probably wanna to connect to the same location so that YouTube doesn't think that you're using a VPN. If your IP address keeps changing, so if I, this time I connect to the Netherlands, maybe next time I connect to, I don't know, Italy, and I go to YouTube and sign in using this different IP address, it might think that I'm using a VPN and it might just raise some suspicions from YouTube sites. So I would just stick to using the same country over and over again. Okay. And so that's basically it as far as the age verification system. If you're worried and you just want to avoid this whole thing, you can just get a VPN. Again, I like to use Express. There are other options like Proton VPN or NordVPN or Surfshark is another really good option. I personally just like to use Express because it's super simple and it's very reliable. All the VPNs I'm mentioning, whether it's Nord, Proton, Express, or Surfshark, they have a no locks policy, by the way, because I know a lot of VPNs claim a no locks policy, but they end up collecting your information anyways. And so now with today's climate where, you know, whether it's YouTube or Discord, or Reddit, or if you're in the UK and all kinds of online data is being collected about you, using a VPN has never been more important. So if that's what you're looking for, you wanna make sure that you're also using a VPN that is not compromising your data. And all these VPNs have a strict no-locks policy that is fully audited, meaning 
they have proof that they don't collect your information and you don't have to just take your word for it. I'm not going to harp on these VPNs too much. You can check them out in the description down below. I'll link a review to each one in case you're interested in learning more about them, as well as discounts. If you'd like to pick one of those up, it'll save you a bunch of cash on your first subscription. And if you don't feel like looking at the reviews and you want a quick recommendation, Express is the best if you're looking for something that is the easiest and most reliable to use. NordVPN is the one that gives you more options and a whole lot of countries at 165. They all have over 100 countries, but it's just that NordVPN has the maximum number of countries really that a VPN can ever have. And it has a bunch of extra features that are really nice as well. So you can definitely go with NordVPN if you're interested in not just a VPN, but a bunch of other features as well, like a mini antivirus and things like dark web monitor and other VPN specialty servers and such. NordVPN is typically very good at giving you all these kinds of very nice options. And Proton VPN, you may know it from the Proton Mail. The makers of Proton Mail is the same people that made Proton VPN. This is a very safe VPN, again, fully audited. The cool thing about it is that it has a free version, but you're not gonna be getting the best speeds, but at least the free version doesn't have data caps, so you can use it as much as you'd like, but again, at limited speeds. The version you're seeing right now is the paid version version because I've access to all the countries the free version will have access to I think only at this point seven countries and again they're not very quick because the quick servers are reserved for paying customers but what I do like about Proton VPN is that I know a lot of you gamers will appreciate this you can switch your NAT type from type 3 to type 2 with Proton VPN this is unheard of in VPN territory, really, and I've never seen this option in any other VPN. Plus, of course, you've got your split tunneling and port forwarding for torrenting and the kill switch, and you have a VPN tester, and you also have an ad blocker and such, so it's a really good VPN. Surfshark is also another amazing VPN, which I would definitely recommend if you're interested in getting the best budget VPN that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost and offers an unlimited number of device connections, simultaneous device connections at that. Unlike NordVPN and ProtonVPN's 10 device limit and ExpressVPN's 8 device limit, Surfshark is just going to give you the option to connect to as many devices as you'd like, which is really cool. So that'll be it for this video. I think you guys have a good overall idea. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And again, all the links will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.